Again, welcome to pre-calculus. This is Mathematics 164. In this lecture, we're going to cover the concept of solving system of linear equations with three variables. And this lecture covers session 1-5, which is chapter one of our course textbook. So our new obje objective is to solve system of three linear equations in three variables using a systematic procedure called the left to right elimination method. Again, we can solve system of linear equations with three variables also using matrix or determinants, which we are going to cover in the course textbook chapter three. Okay, right now we are in chapter one. Uh, chapter one introduces how to use the left to right elimination method. So three equations in three variables will look like this. If A, B, C are coefficient of the three variables, then D is a constant value. So here we have A, X plus B, Y plus Z, C, Z equal to D. A, B, C, D can be any value. And the variables exponent will be one, and that make it a linear equation. Linear equation was the degree of the variables are one. So the three linear equation in three variables may have a unique solution or infinitely many solutions or no solution at all. So again, this is how three equations in three variables looks like. And we can see an example here. So for example, we have three X minus two Y plus Z. We have three equations and the three variables are X, Y, and Z. We can solve this equation for the value of s and y z using other determinants matrices or in this case we are using left to right uh, system of uh, elimination left to right elimination method so here we say we can solve this problem by using left to right elimination method so let's see the example here and follow the steps so the first step is that we want to eliminate x from equation two and equation three. So the first equation is 2x plus 4y plus 5z equal to 4. Second equation is x minus 2y minus 3z equal to 5. Third equation is x plus 3y plus 4z equal to 1. So our goal first is to eliminate x in the second equation also eliminate x in the third equation. Then we can eliminate y in the third equation. When we eliminate y in the third equation, we have the value for z. Then we can substitute the value of z in the second, the new second equation to find y. Then we can substitute the value of y and z to solve for x. So let's start the steps. Here we are going to interchange the first two equations, which make it more easy for us because uh, now the second equation becomes first equation. The reason why we are interchanging because it's a coefficient is one. So I can have x minus 2y minus 3z equal to 5 as our first equation now. So my goal now is to eliminate x from second and third. So I will multiply the first equation by negative two, and I will combine it with the second equation, and that will be our new second equation, and x will be zero. Then I will also multiply the first equation again by the third equation. Uh, no, multiply the first equation by negative one and combine with the third equation, and I will get a new third equation with that x. So that is the first thing we're going to do. So we say here we are going to add negative two times the first equation and the second equation, as we said. Then next, we multiply negative one times the first equation and add it to the third equation, and we get a new third equation. So this will be the result, but let's go through the step. Negative two times s will give me negative two s. Negative two s plus two s will give me zero x. So that's our second equation, new variable for x is zero. Now negative two times negative two y will give me positive four y. Positive four y plus positive four y for second equation will give me eight y. 
Then negative two times negative three will give me positive six Z plus positive five Z. We get a new Z value to be 11 for second equation. And the last is negative two times the constant value five. Then we get negative five plus four, we get neg negative sorry we get two times and uh, negative two times five will give me negative ten negative ten plus four will give me negative six so that's our new second equation same thing for the third new third equation negative one times x plus x of the third equation will give me zero x Negative one times negative two y will give me positive two y. Positive two y with plus three y, the third equation, I will get new five y as a third equation. Then negative one times negative three z will give me positive three plus four z will give me plus seven z. Then negative one times negative uh, positive five will give me negative five. Negative five plus one will give me negative four. So now we are good to go. We have our axis for second and third equation removed. The next step now, we want to be able to remove y in our third equation. If we can eliminate y in our third equation, then we have the value for z. So how do we do that? We find out that we have eight y here and I have plus five y, both of them are positive. So I will multiply the second equation by negative five eight. Negative five eight times eight will give me negative five. Then I'll combine negative five with positive five. So I'll get zero y. But I have to do the same thing to the rest of the equation. So negative five eight times 11 z and plus seven z, that will give me one eight z. Then the same thing also negative five eight times negative six plus negative four, that will give me negative two eight. So now we are done. We have the new third equation to be one eight z equal to negative two eight. So I know the eight will cancel each other since they are in the denominator and there's equal sign between them. So my z value will be negative two. So we have z to be negative two. So if z is negative two, then we, our goal now is to find the value of y. So from the equation two, we can substitute the values. Our new equation two, we have eight y plus 11 z equal to negative six. So z is negative two, so we get 11 times negative two. And eight is multiplied by y. So when eight cross the equal sign, it's going to divide. And also 11 is plus when you cross the equal sign to be minus. So we get y equal to one eight. The eight is multiply everything. Then negative six minus 11 z. Now we know minus 11 times minus two, z is minus two. And that will give us positive 22. And positive 22 minus six will give me positive 16. 16 divided by eight will give me two. So this means z is negative two and y is two. So if I know z is negative two and y is two, then I'll go to the first equation and substitute y and z. So that's what we did here. X will equal to, this is negative two y cross the equal sign to be plus two y, negative three z will be plus three z plus five. So we have five, five plus two y plus three z. We substitute negative two and positive two for z and y. When we combine, we get three. So s will give me three, y will give me two, z will give me negative two. So again, this is called the left to right elimination method. When we have our equation, our goal first is to eliminate x's in second equation and third equation. Then we also eliminate y in the third equation. When I eliminate y in the third equation, 
you can see that we have only z. So when I get a z value, I will come back to the new second equation because in the new second equation, we don't have no x. So when I substitute z, I can find y. Then when I get y and z, I'll put it in our first equation and then I'll solve for x. And that's the steps here. So let's look at another example here. We have s plus 2y plus 3z equal to 6, 2s plus 3y plus 2z equal to 6, minus s plus y plus z equal to 4. Now, this is what we get. So how do we get, how do we eliminate x? Using equation one to eliminate s from the other equations will give us this. The steps again, here we don't need to interchange the rows no more because x is coefficient is one. So how can I can eliminate the x in the second equation. I'll multiply the first equation by negative two and I'll combine it with the second equation. So negative two times s is negative two s plus two s will get zero s, so it's gone. Negative two times positive two will give me negative four y. Negative four y plus three will give me negative y. Negative two times three will give me negative six z. Negative six z plus two z will give me negative four z. And negative two times six is 12. Then 12, negative 12 plus six will give me negative six. So this is our new second equation. We use the negative two times the equation one, then we add it to equation two. Now, in order to get the new third equation without x, I'm going to multiply negative. Uh, here we have x and negative x. So I don't need to multiply. I'll just say multiply by positive one. Or we just combine straight. So s and s will go away. 2y plus y will give me 3y. 3z plus z will give me 4z. 6 plus 4 will give me 10. So equation one is added to equation three, and we go. Now the next step is we have to take y out. Always we try to take the second equation x first, the third equation x, then next we take the third equation y, then we get a value for z. Then we kind of doing substitute method now. So next we want to eliminate y. So in order to eliminate y, we multiply the equation. Let's go back to the original equation. In order to eliminate y, we can multiply the second equation by three because negative three plus positive three will give me zero. Then here we get negative three times negative four will give me positive 12. Positive 12 plus four will give me 16 z. So here we should have, uh, let's go back, negative three times, uh, negative will give us 12. So 12 plus, and this will give us again a negative. Uh, so we'll get again eight z, negative eight z equal to again eight. So this means z will give us one because negative eight, negative eight cancel. So z will give us uh, first equation up here called the lead variables. So we get the uh, values, z is one. So if z is one, we substitute one to the second equation and we get y. This is called the back substitution. So we get y to be positive two, uh, two because it will be six minus four times one. So now if we know two and one, we substitute two and one for z and y, and then we sub and we get the value of s. So it will be six minus four minus three. And that will give us negative one. So our solution will be s equal to negative one, y equal to two, and z equal to three. So one more time for this problem, let's go through the steps one more time. So we want to solve this problem. So the first thing we always do, we look at the coefficient of the equation one, the x. If it's greater than the rest of the two, then we interchange 
and get make sure that the x have the lower coefficient the first equation x again the reason why we do that so that the multiplication and elimination will be more easy for us than using bigger values or fractions etc so here it's okay so the first thing in order to uh, eliminate x, I'm going to eliminate s for the second equation, eliminate x for the third equation, then I'll eliminate y for the third equation, then I'll get z. Then I'll do the back substitution. The second equation, we don't have no more x, but we have y and z. We are looking for y, we know z, so we substitute z. So now we have the value of y and z, then we substitute it for the equation one, and we finish, we solve for x. So the first thing we do here, I'll multiply negative two with the first equation and combine it with the second equation. And that will be the new second equation. Okay, that's what we have here. I also need to combine the first equation, the third equation. Since we have X and negative S, they will automatically cancel each other. So I'll combine the first equation, third equation, we'll get a new third equation. Now I need to eliminate three Y. I'll multiply the second equation by positive, uh, by positive three. So I'll get negative three Y plus two Y and that will eliminate it. And that's what we did here. Three times the second equation and add it to the third equation. Then we have a new third equation. Then from there, we know the value of Z. And we say in a system of equations such as this, the first variable appearing in each equation is called the lead variable. So Z, will have a lead variable of eight. And as we can see, if I have eight, negative eight, Z equal to negative eight, then it will cancel each other. Negative will tend to positive, negative, negative. So Z equal to one. So that's why here we say Z equal to one. And also when we look at the equation here, we have negative Y minus four Z equal to negative six. I will multiply all the equation by negative one. What I'm doing is just change the sign of negative y to positive y. So I'll get plus four z plus six. But plus four z equals the equal sign is going to be negative. So the second equation, we can write it as y equal to six minus four z. Then the first equation, we can say six minus two y minus three z because we have plus two y plus three z. When they cross the equal sign, the sign will change to negatives. So that's what we have, s equal to six minus two y minus three z. Then the second equation, y equal to six minus four z. And the third equation, we already find the value of z. So we do back substitution. Uh, so y equal to six minus four times one, which is two. Then we have Z is one, Y is two. So we can solve for X, six minus four minus three. And that will give us negative one. So our solution will be S equal to negative one, Y equal to two and Z equal to three. So this will be the end of this lectures. And again, wish everybody the best and see you in the next lectures.